I'm going to introduce our next group of speakers. And these uh, three speakers are applying systems thinking specifically to water education and outreach. Um, the first two are speaking together, Brenda Coley and Kirsten Sheed. They're both from Milwaukee Water Commons, a part of the Water School. And then our, our other speaker in this group is Jim Collins. He's the watershed liaison for the North Dakota Department of Health. So without further delay, Kirsten and Brenda, I will pass it to you. There we go. Thank you. Welcome them, welcome them. Yeah. I thought you'd be on the Okay, hello everyone, welcome. Uh, my name is Brenda Coley. And I'm Kirsten Shedd. We work for Milwaukee Water Commons. I'm the co-executive uh, director of Milwaukee Water Commons. And I'm the Water City Program Manager. Um, we just want to give you a brief overview of who Milwaukee Water Commons is and the work that we do because we think it's an important frame for how we applied systems thinking to um, one piece of our programming. So Milwaukee Water Commons, our mission um, is that we are a cross-city cross network that fosters connection, hands-on collaboration, and broad community leadership on behalf of our waters. So we promote stewardship of equitable access to and shared decision making for our common waters. And our vision is that Milwaukee would really be a model water city where all of us have a stake in the health of our waters and where we all share in their care and their benefit. So to that end, we have five guiding principles. Um, they include water as an essential element for all life on earth. We believe that water belongs to no one and can't be owned. We recognize the gift of the Great Lakes, that they have nurtured our ancestors and have shaped us as people and as a community and that they continue to sustain us. We all have a profound responsibility to protect and pass on clean and abundant fresh water to future generations. And this fifth principle, which is really where um, this piece of the work falls, which is the decision about the care and use of our water must involve all of us. So Milwaukee Water Commons organizes itself around um, a couple of frameworks, the commons, collective impact, environmental justice. And I'm going to just say a few words about that. So collective impact really is a framework that we use to tackle deeply entrenched and complex problems. And it's a structure and an approach where all sectors, all groups um, bring strengths to this issue and to the problem. and then. Um, move in the same direction. And we feel that that's a really um, strong kind of impact for our community. Uh, we believe in the commons philosophy, and to say it in a way that we say it at work all the time, uh, all the people, all the time, we all have a responsibility um, regarding the commons, and the commons belongs to all of us. And then we have environmental justice, and well, I won't go through that, but I know that if we're really trying to um, make a particular focus on people who have been historically disenfranchised from the water. And we sort of plan and organize our work in our meetings around the Hamez principles. And these were principles that were formed in the 90s, where, uh, and there's a particular emphasis on communities. And it was environmental folks that came together to, um, to form these principles. And one of the ones that's really important to me that sticks out that, um, that people should be able to really speak for themselves. So that's one of those principles of Hamez. Um, Milwaukee Water Commons is organized uh, around three programs, um, Water, three, Water City 3.0, um, Water School, and then our cultural program, um, We Are Water. Uh, Water City 3.0 is our public policy arm of the organization, and we have six or seven initiatives that are around that um, public policy initiative. We have community engagement there, and these are what we think would make a true water city. Uh, we Are Water is our cultural program. It happens uh, once a year in August in the evening by the lakefront. We have about 350 people that attend that. And uh, we believe that every culture has a water uh, story and we get a chance to really tell that to one another during this program. And then Water School, which is what we're going to talk about today, is really our capacity building um, um, school and lends um, education to the community to teach stewardship about water. 
So with Water School, this Water School meets um, on um, monthly in the summer, one Saturday day long, and we were trying to, we came to um, think Water School with these issues and problems in our head. And we're trying to really address through Water School that people are disengaged and disconnected from the water really through no fault of their own. They lack responsibility towards the water because they're not engaged with it, and they're lack, they have a lack of access to water experiences. So when it comes to the recreation and education, the population that we're dealing with don't have any access to that. And so, and another thing, a big problem programmatically wise was that water school components were not um, interrelated. So the focus for our talk today is really on um, our ap application of MAC, which a few people have already mentioned, MAP, Activate, and Check. Um, so we started um, by mapping the mental model that we were wanting to shift and what we saw our um, participants um, the way we saw it. So we mapped the problem. People are disengaged from the water. They treat it only as a resource historically. Um, that the current mental model is individualistic and bent towards commodification, exploitation, and restricted access. And especially um, is loaded with segregation. And that we wanted to shift participants' mental models to seeing themselves as um, water stewards, that they would know that they're part of the community, that they would treat the water as a friend, and know their commons responsibility. So mapping out the problem and the desired effect clarified our thinking um, around the issue. We decided to make sure, so here we see the people being disengaged from the water. Um, in the middle is our water school, which we see as one of the solutions or the drivers towards what our solution, towards our um, successful outcome, which would be people seeing themselves as water stewards, treating the water as a friend in that commons responsibility. Um, we realized that even in what we were going for, we needed to break down those terms. What do we mean by treating water as a friend? Because we don't just mean like this fuzzy, warm feeling, although we'd like that too. Um, what did we mean by that? What did we mean by commons responsibility? So we used DSRP to really break down those terms, clarify them internally so that we can clarify them to other people. Um, we then activated the mental model. So we reassessed every activity associated with our water school for 2017. We wanted each activity to relate back to one of the key ideas. We significantly reduced the number of activities mm -hmm. we planned and focused on interactive learning um, that directly connected our participants with water and built on existing knowledge. So we decided to explicitly lay out our learning objectives. Um, the Wisconsin Water School, that was one thing we really learned. We always knew what we were being taught because we were told this is what we're going to try to teach you today. And so we um, explicitly laid that out for our teams as well. Uh, we met with the team coordinators in June and used a simplified version of that map that um, I had up on the board to explain to them what we were hoping to come out of water school. And we even restructured our final projects to make sure that um, the various pieces, there's an art component to a project and a community education element, all related back to core objectives, which seems obvious now, but was not something we had been doing before. <laughs> Um, and then we checked our mental model. And in many ways, because we were working with an existing program, our water school has been running, this was the fourth year, um, we started with check. And so we saw that some of our previous learning outcomes were not coming through in 2016 participants. And so we discussed how their mental models had changed and how they had not. And by checking our previous year's outcomes, that helped us to map the plan and re-envision our work for 2017. So throughout um, water school this year, we really checked for the understanding periodically in every session. And so we had, um, the first session we had activities around the watersheds. We met in the Menominee River watershed. And then after we had our cultural talk around the watershed, we came back, you know, and used the experience we had at Think Water, which we built a watershed. We had each group build a watershed out of sand. Um, and on another session, we really took them to a lake about uh, 50 miles outside the city that is connected to the Milwaukee River watershed and we had a map and we showed them where those connections lay and we asked on the last session we asked participants to name the watershed they live in and this is really a way for us to check because before we would have them do this exercise they didn't know where the watershed what watershed they lived in so they would give us the biggest body of water that they knew of <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it was the ocean so they asked participants to name the watershed that they lived in and make a promise to that watershed so how what will you do behaviorally that will will, will support the health of the watershed and this really built the mental model that everyday behavior affects our watershed. 
Um, so Water School, just a little bit about the organization. We have time, uh, five teams this year, an after-school program that uses hip-hop to tackle social justice issues, a Latino environmental school, a Native American health center, and an African-American two-acre community garden, and, and then the Islamic Society of Milwaukee. So we met in three different watersheds in the city of Milwaukee. Each time we had a cultural presentation on that water, which fostered connection to the water, and each culture has a water story. Each time we discuss watersheds, uh, we activated that new mental model, and we use experiential education and recreation day at Mothy Lake to, um, to giving access to the water as a friend and to making a special connection. So one thing about Think Water that we learned about systems um, th um, thinking is that we really have to have a lot of touch points uh, uh, that go in the same direction. So lots of experiences that then um, really build people's mental model around the, the watershed and their, their behavior really, their connection to that watershed. So some of the results of our efforts, uh, we really saw an increased connection between the cultures of the groups that participated in water school. And that had been true before. We think also laying out the learning objectives, meeting with the core leaders in advance, mm -hmm. um, having activities that were building upon each other also built between the teams. Um, we offered opportunities to interact with water in new ways. We had always wanted to do that, and I think we did that better this year. Um, we created safe spaces for engagement with the water because we really wanted people to have that touch point. Um, we made commitments to protecting watersheds, which was another check that um, participants didn't even realize we were checking their knowledge. <laughs> um, but we were also hoping that they would follow through on those commitments and feel that connection. Um, and we shifted knowledge and understanding through the program. Um, what we learned is the value of explicitly telling mm -hmm. participants what you want them to learn. Um, also focusing on fewer learning objectives and doing them well, um, and the importance of taking time to make connections between the teams really enhances the learning. Um, we really knew the power of a transformational water experience, an engaging water experience, but we think we actually did it better this time. There was a picture earlier on where it was a bunch of people on top of a larger boat. That had been our outdoor day, where every or one of our outdoor days, mm -hmm. everyone is out on a large boat that goes down the Milwaukee River, down to the confluence of three rivers. But you're very disconnected from the water. You're up high. It's loud. It's big. So instead, being out here, where you're, if you've, you know, for a lot of these folks that never been in a kayak before, you're in the water. You you have a much better sense of the water. So that transformational power of an engaging experience. Um, and then we kept all activities connected to our learning objectives in a much more intentional way. And we had a sense that people were disengaged from the water, but after that day, we really knew it. I would say about 80% of the folks that were, that were with us, and we had about 35, 40 people with, with us, had never stuck their foot in a lake. They had been in a swimming pool, but they had not um, been in a lake, and they had not kayaked before. And lots of folks that were with us had fished. So we had three stations. We had a fishing station, we had a kayak station, and then we had a swimming station. Mm -hmm. So, But the interesting thing about it is that it transformed us but it also transformed the folks who were there. Because this, the, this group of people who were there, it was not traditionally known that people of color would come to a lake like this. And everybody, I have to say this, was happy that day. Mm -hmm. Because it just transformed the whole, the whole lake. So this was really our first attempt um, at applying systems thinking to our educational programming. We have a number of other areas of educational and outreach programming that we're looking mm -hmm. forward to expanding our systems thinking um, to. Um, and that MAC specifically in this instance really shaped um, and reshaped our water school in a way that um, it was transformational, and we're looking forward to, um, we, water school starts again this summer in June, and so we're taking it to the next level with how can we re-look re at other aspects of our curriculum and um, use systems thinking to maximize their impact. Um, so we just wanted to put the, our story out to you and suggest that systems thinking may also be a way to transform your water education, maybe your community engagement, and even your policy implementation. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.